Boys, it is chilly out. So we're gonna do a cold start here. It's up for about a full 24 hours now. Diesel preheat is in process. Turn that fan down until the truck warms up. She hardly made it, but she made it. That high idle isn't wasting any time, man. It's kicking on right away. And actually, we're gonna kick on the cruise. Increase it a little bit more. There, we'll leave it right there for now. Yo, what is up, Latin Proud Crowd? Hopefully you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. I'm actually in the truck because I have to run and pick up my sister because go figure her Ford won't start again. So we're gonna go do that really quick, but we gotta go get that done because you know, Ford problems, I need a Dodge to save them again. Ram, my bad. And then we're going to address a couple of other things once we get going down the road here on the two wheel drive truck and kind of something that I'm gonna be making a small change. It's not, it's nothing, it's not like a big change, um, but it's just a little change that a lot of people kind of recommended to me. And then I got to a point where I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna do it because it's gonna be way easier and it's gonna save us a lot more time than if we were to go another route. So we'll get to that in just a second. And we are off, headed down the road. But anyways, let's get to the topic of what we are doing to the two wheel drive first and that's gonna be a little bit different than originally planned. So um, those of you who have been keeping up with the build recently, you know that originally we were gonna run the H1C because we're gonna do compound turbos and you need to have that smaller factory turbo as your low end, as your low end power turbocharger and then you use that S475 or the bigger turbo of your choice, depending on what kit you go with and what you want, um, that, that'll carry on your higher end power, your cruising, your pulling power, that kind of stuff when you're higher RPM going down the road. Um, and that small turbo can no longer, you know, maintain the amount of power and boost needed. It kind of carries that power over to the bigger one. The bigger one kind of takes over um, a lot of the workload. We were going to originally stick with the H1C on that truck because I didn't think much of it. I'm like, oh, you know, H1C, it'll be fine, you know. I don't know if anybody really uses an H1C for the small primary turbo on that truck or not on these when you do compounds, but I'm like, you know, it's fine. We'll, we'll just do the H1C and we'll make that work. However, the adapting plates for the turbo kit that I got require either an HX35 or whichever turbo is up from that out of the 24 valve Cummins, the uh, 98 to 2002 Cummins trucks. Um, whatever turbo those have, it's for those trucks or the HX35 trucks, which is gonna be your um, 1994 up until 1998. You know, it was one of those deals where the whole kit kind of goes around those turbo options. And since I have an H1C, the, the adapting plate on the exhaust side that goes from the, um, H, the well, not the H1C, but it's supposed to go from your small charger to your big charger on the exhaust side, it doesn't mount up right. Um, due to being an H1C, it doesn't have the back plate that comes off to where that adapter plate can now mount to the back of that. So it's giving me a little bit of an issue and the only way that I can make that work is A, I somehow find an adapter which isn't really gonna work because the fitment is so tight and so specific to that gap and amount of space there to make that work that if you add, you know, if you add an adapter plate and then you add your flange that you have to have there, you're gonna add too much there and then it's not gonna line up right and then you're gonna have to make other adjustments and other modifications and it's just gonna, yeah, got my uh, DEF back there sliding around because I gotta fill up the other half of that uh, gauge there with more DEF, so anyways, all that aside, it's just not gonna make for an easy job. I and mean, there is a way you could do it by taking that adapter plate that they give you to go from exhaust side to exhaust side on the small tur turbo to big turbo, which would be basically hacking up the flange that they give you that's supposed to mount up to the HX35 style turbo and weld it to there. The only problem with that is you can have really, really, unless you're really, really good at it, and I take it to a shop and I waste more time, 
um, and for them to try to make it perfect, and it has to be perfect, otherwise it's not gonna line up right. It's just, you could have an exhaust leak, you could have a crack, you could have it break off, like just other small stuff that I don't really wanna deal with, and it's just time that I don't really wanna burn, and I wanna get this done fairly soon. So I went ahead and I ordered an HX35, it says it was a factory OEM replacement. I don't know if it was remanufactured or you know, a refurbished turbo. It looks like it was in brand new condition, whatever. But it's an HX35 um, and it's clean and it should do the job and make things a lot easier, especially if it was remanufactured and it's already been taken apart recently. It's gonna be a lot easier to do that than it's going to be to, you know, find an old HX35 and take it apart and make sure and just hope that it's all good. You know, cause I did have an HX35 and then I give it to Jeshua who, you know, a buddy, buddy of mine, Jeshua for his first gen, cause he wanted to get a little bit more boost out of it which it did do that. However, because I told him, I said, I'm not gonna need this. I said, I'm not gonna need it. But I kept it in a box because I thought maybe someday I'll use it. And then I got to a point where I'm like, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'll just give it to him. And now I need an HX35. And that was the one off my dually, but um, it's not a big deal. Ordered a new one. And so that's gonna be in here within a few days. Yesterday in the video where I said I ran out of DEF on my truck, I didn't explain what is actually gonna happen if I did run out of DEF. And essentially what happens apparently, because I had no idea. I was just like, oh, what the heck? What, I don't know. What, What's it gonna do? Make me stop driving because it's out of some fluid? Doubt it, you know what I mean? And uh, apparently it literally does. Um, essentially what it'll do when you're completely out, when you get close to being out, it says you have 200 miles remaining once you get down to roughly 200 miles worth of DEF left. And then once you're out, it literally disables your power to where you're only able to go five miles per hour until you refill it. That's ridiculous. So, anyways, just thought I'd let you know in case you also had no idea what happens when you run out of DEF on your truck. Well, I may or may not have just gotten back from a Chevy dealer to look at a freaking minty, minty, minty L5P Duramax. So, after all that mintness, I just had to, I had to step away because it was getting a little too fresh around there. That truck was freaking beautiful. So, so nice, actually. There's my dad pulling in right now with his power, power joke. I mean, stroke. Truck is so I, I do love the power shark. The truck sounds so so mean. It is it is it is very nice. But anyhow, I gotta go pull up my buddy Jeshua. I just got back from the Chevy dealership. I was looking at trucks, I was talking numbers with the guy, and I'm like, dang bro, your truck's nice. I really like it. I said, when'd you get it in? They said literally like three hours ago, and I was like, Oh, that's cool. You know, brand literally brand new. It's got like three miles on it. It's just awesome. And I was looking at the truck and I'm like, dang, bro, I don't know if I can pay the seventy six thousand dollar tag that it says right there. I'm like, eh, I, don't, I don't know about that. And then He's like, no, he's like, we'll, we'll sell it to you for 69,000. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then after a couple minutes, I'm like, what are other discounts I can get? Cause I'm like, I don't know, 69,000, that's a lot. I'm like, that's about what I paid for this Longhorn out here. You know, I'm like, I, I don't know about that. Well, he's like, if you can get an employee discount, we'll give it to you for 62. And I'm like, brand new L5P, high country edition, literally just loaded out, completely loaded out. And I'm like, okay. That's a really good deal. It's brand new 2019, literally no mileage on it. Brand spanking new truck. Yeah, I I was like, well, my grandfather worked at GM for 20 years. My grandfather, you know, the guy that we bought the truck for. We've made some videos with that guy. Yeah, he worked at GM. Crazy, right? Grandfather worked for GM and he only drives Mopar stuff. But he worked at GM for 20 plus years and he retired from there, I think in 07. I could be wrong, but I feel like it was around there. Maybe not, give or take. And so they're like, no, he still gets the discount for you if you can get the number from him and have him call GM family first or something and have him give you a code um, specifically for you from him. He's like, then you're good to go. And I'm like, oh, cool, you know? So um, that may or may not be happening. I will let you guys know, but if that does happen, quite honestly, after this giveaway is over, this Longhorn giveaway, I'm, I'm gonna daily drive that Duramax for a, a little while and just kind of take like a, a break from the giveaway stuff and just really focus more on revamping my merch, revamping the brand, what it stands for, what it means, and I try to put more into that. You know what I mean? You guys have been buying it up like crazy and I really appreciate that, but if you guys are gonna be buying that stuff, I wanna put more and more into that so that there's so much more meaning to it than just, you know, hey, you know, buy Loud and Proud merch because, you know, it's gonna help, you know, with the channel, the trucks, and all that stuff and making stuff happen, which is what it does. We can't give away trucks and we can't we can't buy the truck parts to build the trucks and stuff without that kind of without the merch sales. That's that's how everything gets paid for. YouTube revenue does not pay for jack crap. 
because it's very unreliable and it's very all over the place. Um, and you ask any YouTuber, any truck channel, they're gonna tell you the same thing. Like it's very, 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 very weird. It's very, you can't count on it. Yeah, that's, that's why we do the giveaways. In case you guys are wondering again, but if you don't want to win this brand new truck, you could be winning that truck if you prefer the old school, all reliable five speed four wheel drive 12 valves. Um, those are those are amazing trucks, definitely really cool trucks. But, anyways, we got to go pull out my buddy Jeshua because he got stuck in our field in his two wheel drive. First, I was actually talking about how I gave him my HX35 earlier today, and go figure, he gives me a call, and I'm like, Where you at? He's like, In your field, stuck. <laughs> So we're gonna go pull him out. But anyways, I was just mentioning that uh, we may be getting a new truck for the channel, and it's gonna be sick. And I want it to go completely different. If I, if, cause if I, I'm basically what I'm banking on is losing my Longhorn, um, because this truck is is phenomenal, awesome. But let's just face it. There's a good chance I'm losing the Longhorn. And honestly, if I lose the Longhorn or if I get to keep the Longhorn, regardless, I'm gonna want to buy this L5P because it's just it's cool. And I don't know who else has an L5P that I've seen on YouTube yet that regularly makes some kind of content on it. And I think it'd be kind of cool to uh, get a truck like that and build it. And I know it's expensive to tune, really expensive, but I think it would make for some really cool and new content, especially for this channel, because it's only ever been, you know, the 12 valve stuff pretty much forever. We'll see what happens, but I gotta go grab a toe strap and pull this joker out of the mud. Now I'm gonna do what this dude can't do and put this baby in four wheel drive. Look at that, look at that engaging. Engaging locked. I do love that about these new trucks. You just throw them forward. So easy. Now, I don't know if he has anything to pull himself out or not. I brought <laughs> this little strap that I could find. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but I don't have a lot of options right now. So we're going to see. We're going to find out. We're going to try to get him hooked up right now. Good thing we got these cameras to help out now, you know what I mean? I don't know what we do without him. Look at this dude. This dude all stuck. All freaking stuck. Let's, let's see what we can do here.